what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we have a very special guest this is the first time i have invited somebody to my channel and she is nicole brenny from listen to the stars youtube channel and she's quite famous for her tarot card readings and she also does astrological readings but you have to mail her and for tarot readings you can go to the website which i will pin it down in the description and in the comments and she is more well versed with western astrology and that's how it started i guess as you told me for you and yeah. it's very interesting how she got into astrology so i would welcome you to exotic astrology and i am very privileged to have you and today she is going to talk on the subject which probably nobody talks in astrology it is omens or as you say in sanskrit nimitta basically nimitta means the signs which you see from the universe or from wherever anyways it doesn't make sense for me to say she will <laughs> tell what is, <laughs> she will yeah. tell what nimitta is and the stage is yours please yeah, well, first i just want to say thank you and we were speaking before we started recording and i feel like i barely even got enough time to get to know you so i hope that we will continue our pre-recording conversation another time of course yeah yeah surely <laughs> and i'm really grateful for you to have me on here i'm so happy to just you know connect with more people to talk about astrology and so yes i do know about western astrology but i actually have more so studied in depth vedic astrology and i use the tropical zodiac but i do have a certification from dr david frawley in oh. um, ethereal zodiac but i actually prefer to use the methods i've learned from ernst so i kind of uh -huh. I've kind of erased that knowledge, but I have studied the sidereal zodiac yeah, as well. So, whichever works, the end result matters. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's different for, for each person. So I just wanted to clarify that. And yeah, I'm just here today to talk about some omens, what they are. And really, the only reason I want to talk about them is not just for fun, but because I actually use them all the time in my readings. They're a huge part. Okay. Of the readings that I do and I actually give a reading called the diamond reading and the di it's called the diamond reading because there are four different parts to it so there are yes. the, it's the intuitive aspect which includes omens and omens will not come for every client it's just when they happen I'm open to them and then okay. there are, I use tarot cards the astrology chart and then cards of truth which are basically playing cards and then there's a software uh, that I showed you before yeah <laughs> They're like, you know, it's the cards with numerology mixed with astrology. It's really crazy. If you go to my channel, I have dozens of videos on that, or at least a dozen. And, um, but omens are really fascinating to me because I grew up with them. Like it's been one of my first sort of links to the magical sort of mystical world. And what omens are is basically symbols from nature, signs from nature. And they're happening all the time. So sometimes we interpret something that we see from nature as an omen, like a bird flying or a flower in our path or um, like a lightning bolt in the sky. We, you know, we think of that as a sign, but really if we are actually paying attention, there are always subtle si signals from nature. It's just that yes. we detach ourselves so much from nature. We don't realize that we are nature, you know, yes. these are a part of nature. So, really if we are all a part of this you know network and if we're all a part of this energy then this energy is a reflection of who we are and where we're at and so if we're open to it not only are we open to ourselves we're open to the reflection of ourselves we can more objectively see where our energy is at and what we can do to make better use of that energy so omens will often appear as you know animals plants things in the sky, comets, things like that, um, stars, shooting stars, and then also something that I'm a little bit more familiar with just because I have so many dreams is dream omens. Oh, okay. okay? So in the United States, I would say that people are most familiar with omens in the term or in the form of superstitions. So like people will say if a black cat crosses your path, 
you're gonna something bad's gonna happen right or the biggest one growing up that I had in my household was if a broom falls and someone then company's coming and every single time that would happen if the broom just fell when no one touched it then all of a sudden we would get an unexpected guest you know oh. So those are omens. So they're basically just patterns in nature or, you know, things that happen in nature that people have observed that sort of mean a certain thing. And in there, you know, we use them in astrology and astrologers can actually, they pay attention to what the omen is. And then they look to see what nakshatra the moon is in, which direction the omen came from, all these different things in order to determine what exactly it means. So one of the biggest things my teacher talks about um, as an example of an everyday omen is um, vehicles and relationships. So I'll, I'll talk, I'll actually, let me just go back to that because I want to go back to just kind of like omens in real life before I relate it to astrology because that's going to be really interesting for you guys. But even if I didn't know astrology, I've had omens show up in my life and they've meant something. And one of the biggest things was my mom would really get a lot of signs from crows. So, you know, like, like almost, you know, black crows, like ravens. And when her father was really sick, my grandpa, I think, I think the day or two before he died, our entire front yard was covered in crows. And then we looked and so was our entire backyard just Do dozens if not hundreds of crows just everywhere it was like a horror film and my mom knew okay he is going to pass soon this is a sign this is an omen and she would always receive messages from crows that was kind of her sort of omen and I think even if you read in a book you know there are different omens related to birds and I think crows often signify death because you know that black bird often is related to you know, Saturn or death and things like that. And I'm, I'm not making that as like a specific delineation, but a lot of people will make that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things like that. And then another interesting thing from growing up is after my grandfather passed, I would receive um, pennies. All of a sudden, like, you know, just randomly, I would find pennies everywhere pennies in my pockets, pennies in my backpack after school, just everywhere there'd be pennies. And the interesting thing was that my grandfather used to have a coin collection. And before he died, I used to help him put together his coin collection. So the, it wasn't necessarily from nature, but it was something that was in my path that I was open and receptive to. That was an omen that my grandfather was still caring about me or that I was connecting with that energy. Um, and was in the flow of that energy. So that's a little bit more of a stretch, but these are just sort of things that are like everyday omens, you know, that people can kind of see um, and that happen without even astrology. But in astrology, it's really interesting. Um, one of the best books about omens is the Brihat Samhita. Um, I cannot say that I've read the entire thing. I can just say that it's a great reference and that when I do see omens, I'll often, I have it on my computer, so I'll often just like search the document to find exactly what I'm looking for. And it's an incredible book about omens. It really explains um, what each omen means and omens can mean different things depending on when you see them, in which part of the sky you've seen them, um, in what energy you were feeling when you, when you saw them. So for instance, rainbows, we think they're such a beautiful thing, but actually the Brihat Samhita will say that sometimes rainbows are a terrible thing. Oh. See. It depends. It really, really depends. And one of the reasons why is because uh, rainbows are an illusion. And the planet most closely linked with the illusion is Rahu, which is not a nice, benefic influence. Rahu is very malefic and can cause a lot of chaos. So you'll see a lot of things like that. And honestly, if you can get a copy of the Brihat Samhita, and I think even some places online have it for free, like astrological digital libraries, it is a fascinating book. I spent hours one night just, you know, obviously I couldn't read the whole thing, but I went through like every single heading to find out what everything meant because it's actually really surprising. So 
Yeah, and in this, I would like to say one thing. Even when the day India got independence, nineteen forty-seven, fifteenth August, uh, that time also there was a rainbow. He said. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so crazy! And, and I'm not very sure, but if I remember, Rahu is in the lagna of India's independence horoscope. That just makes me so like it makes me feel so much because it just seems to, like perfectly show yeah. that. I'm not very sure, but I have heard this that uh, and the independence was taken when Pushya Nakshatra was running, and that's how I just connected. And the rainbow was in the morning, and that is why Rahu is in the lagna. It's very good, as you said, illusion. <laughs> it is illusion. It's it really is, but it's also the planet of where we're meant to go, of like where our soul is supposed to be learning, and so much about India is about our growth, our soul growth, you know, even for someone like me that doesn't live there, like it's all about that evolution. So to me, that makes sense. Like to me, it's not really a bad thing. And India is also like really interested in kind of like spreading their knowledge throughout the world and having Rahu in the first house would make you more interested in foreigners, you know? <laughs> yeah. So the Brihat Samhita is honestly the absolute best book that I've ever found on omens. And um, I, yeah, I had it for a long time. And then an astrologer that I knew reminded me about it. Um, she was like, yeah, this is the book that I've referenced for omens. And it's a great book. So you can look up things in the Brihat Samhita and you can see over time, all of this knowledge that has been collected about, you know, if you see a bird in this direction at this time, when the moon's in this nakshatra, this is what it means. You can get very specific. Mm -hmm. But what I think is even more important is to create your own sort of um, symbolism and your own relationship, because that's always going to be more true than what you read in a book. So the Brihat Samhita is great, but really the way that I experience and express and use omens is more so from my own um, awareness and observation and the best way to kind of like get in touch with your inner symbolism and your personal archetypes is through journaling through um, writing about different signs that you've seen how they've played out and even writing down your dreams and different symbols and signs you see in dreams so that's how i work with them and another way to work with them is what i was bringing up before um, my teacher one of my teachers ernst wilhelm often speaks about omens in relationship to um, vehicles. So in Vedic astrology, Venus is the planet of love and relationships as it rules the uh, natural seventh house or seventh sign of Libra. Libra is all about maintaining balance. It's about healthy give and take. It's about relating to others because it's a natural seventh house. It's that house exactly opposite of ourself where we need to deal with other people. And um, Venus also rules vehicles. Okay, it's a natural karaka for vehicles. So then when you are getting into a relationship and you start having a bunch of car problems, typically it's going to be a sign that that relationship isn't really going to work out or there might be problems. And then the specific part of the car oh, will... Sorry uh, to interrupt you. It is like when the couple is married that time or if like suppose you're 10 years married, suppose you're married for 10 years. Yeah, suppose you're married for 10 years and then you the car breaks, then is it a bad sign that your relationship may have to, okay. Yeah, it can be a bad sign. It can really be a bad sign. And the thing is, like, I really rejected this. But then I thought back and I had this boyfriend and we were super in love. He's a great person. Um, he's a wonderful person, but we could never, we could never get our day-to-day -day life to, like, kind of sync up. Like our just our daily routines were so, so different. And one time, for the first time, I let him use my car. And he put his cat in the car and I was watching his cat. So he had the cat, he had the litter box, he put it in the car. And driving home from my house to his house, a woman hit his hit my car while he was driving it. Like just full speed hit it and then fled the scene. So he had to drive my car to go chase her into a parking lot, corner her and tell her, look, you just crashed into my girlfriend's car. You're trying to flee the scene. I need to collect your insurance um, information because this isn't even my vehicle. 
The car was completely totaled. I actually had to get rid of that car and buy a new car using the insurance money from that vehicle. It was like completely destroyed. And before I even dated him, that car was in pretty bad shape. And um, shortly after that, a few months after that, we actually ended up breaking up. And it really was, you know, it was, in my opinion, it was more so because of him. And if you think about that story, he was the one driving the car. Oh. But at the end of the day, the real influence was just kind of outside influences. It was just like it wasn't going to work out, which is kind of represented by someone else kind of crashing in to the vehicle. It was just kind of like, you know, our paths were not really in the same place. And so it was really kind of an omen about how the relationship was going to end. All oh. of that, right? That matches very well. Very well it matches. And third person coming in maybe from your side or maybe from other side, from his side. Yeah, that sums up. Yeah, so it was just really symbolic. And you'll see that a lot. And I know Ernst, who's been reading charts for way longer than me, has seen that really show up when people have um, troubles with their vehicles, ruled by Venus, they'll often have troubles with their relationships. And you can think of that in a lot of different ways, and I haven't even done this yet, but the moon rules your mother, as well as your emotions and your nourishment and things like that. And so, you know, you can pay attention to these different reflective areas of your life. So maybe if you're having troubles nur or trouble nurturing yourself, work on your relationship with your mother. So there are a lot of things to learn, but um, you, omens are typically going to be related to different nakshatras, different planets, um, different things like that very easily. And one question I want to ask you in this, like, for example, you said, if there's a problem in the vehicle, then Venus can be affected, the relationship. But then uh, Moon is also the Karaka for the fourth house. So have you seen that apart from Venus, does it happen that the Moon also gets affected? I mean, your mother or is it that one of that that happens, either mother or the wife or sometimes both happens? Sometimes it's just one from what I've seen and I can't speak for every single situation. But for instance, when I see people, we were just talking about Sade Sati or the transit of Saturn over the house that your moon is in, the house before, the house after. Sometimes I'll see that not only do clients have issues with their emotions and they're feeling alienated, but also their mother will be going through difficulty. So you'll have to have a very strong factor in another area of your chart or in one of your divisional charts to kind of offset that. And if you don't really have that, then you're probably going to see more of the areas of your life affected. Um, and, uh, also, uh, do you, uh, can you connect something like this? For example, like my elder brother, he has just shifted back to India after three years and he is going to purchase a new car now. <laughs> so he's planning, should I buy a car which already somebody has used or maybe a new car but now he has decided he will take a new car which is like first class first class in the sense nobody has used it so do you see anything here that like for in general i'm asking if somebody is going to purchase a car or what happens during that time is it also linked to the relationship of what it can happen within the relationship later well i love that you asked that question because i was actually thinking about that and i can only speak from experience because i haven't really observed a lot of other people um, going through this, but after that car got crashed by my ex-boyfriend, I ended up having to get a car. It was a used car, but it was new for me. And I love this car. It drives so well. I couldn't be happier with this car, even though it's used. And there were issues with it at first. And what I noticed is that it took me probably six months to really take care of all the different issues because I had to spend money and then save money until I could afford the next thing. And right. But I was, I was fixing the issues in the car at the same rate as I was fixing my emotional issues and my relationship issues. And so one day after my car was perfectly fixed, I had a flat tire, right? And it was perfectly symbolic of my relationship, how I was feeling about relationships, even though I was single, I was feeling completely like deflated <laughs> about my relationship life. And I put off fixing that for so long. And then when I went into my apartment, I noticed that both of the tires on my bike were flat. So this was a huge symbol for me that I really was kind of neglecting, sort of putting myself out there to be in a relationship again. And as soon as I 
filled, not only fixed my um, car tire, but also my bike tires, I ended up meeting someone within just like a few weeks and I started a new relationship. So I do see kind of correlations. And as far as, you know, buying a used versus new vehicle, I think that you can often think about purchases that you're making in your life as kind of propitiations or like um, offerings to the gods. So like, you know, if you are, if you go buy yourself a bunch of makeup, it's almost like you're propitiating or celebrating your Venus. You're celebrating something beautiful. And I notice that energy um, very strongly in my life. And a lot of the times on Fridays, I often make donations of Venusian items because I want to boost up my Venus and not even just for me, but I just like to do that because I can. And I oftentimes have like old instruments and old, you know, um, art things that I can like cameras. I had cameras that I was just getting rid of and it's not completely Venus stuff, but oftentimes I'll like donate on specific days just, you know, to boost the planet. So I do think that you're kind of making an investment in a certain planetary energy when you're giving your resources towards a specific thing. So that's how I feel about it. And I'm sure that there's a lot of different opinions on that. And does it also have link with the property or suppose some furniture in the home or something like that? Have you seen that sometimes if a furniture is broken or some, sometimes it happens that some part is broken and then that also affects the relationship? Can it happen? Well, with that would be, so furniture, what do you think furniture would be ruled by? Because like home stuff is Mars, but furniture itself seems... Yeah, furniture, if there is wood, then that is ruled by Saturn. Yeah. I haven't really seen anything necessarily like that, honestly. But I'll give you some examples from like real life client stuff. And then you'll kind of see how I'm using omens in just like the everyday sort of thing. But one, one thing that I wanted to mention before I give more specific examples is I did want to share an example from the Brihat Samhita. Yeah, please. Just so you guys can kind of like know what I'm talking about. And um, one time, so this was on August 22nd. Are you still? Yeah, you can see me. Okay. I'm just looking at my computer screen, but I'm still here. So on August 22nd, I saw a huge meteor. I think it was a meteor or a comet at 10.52 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And it was just like this beautiful, beautiful comet. and this is where I don't know enough about comets and what they mean. Um, in, like, I don't know, I don't have enough of a relationship with them to kind of create my own omen. But I kind of, I thought about the energy of it. And I thought this made me feel really good. It was one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen. So, you know, sometimes you just see, you see a shooting star and it's like a little small thing. This comet was so big. It literally looked like a train had flown through outer space. Like it was as big as like a huge vehicle. It was like the biggest thing I'd ever seen. It lit up the entire sky that I didn't see it at first. I was looking down because it was at nighttime. I was walking around a lake and it lit up the sky so brightly that it shifted my focus to go look at it. And it was literally like a huge vehicle floating across outer space. And it was beautiful. And it was so big that you could see the delineation of yellow, orange, green, purple, blue. And it was so big that you could see the like how perfectly those colors formed together. And then within a few seconds, it disappeared. So I took out my compass, I checked which area of the sky it was in, wrote down the date, and then I went to the Brihat Samhita. And this is gonna be kind of fascinating, I think, for some of you, but um, in, I don't remember which page this was on, but there's an excerpt that says, if the meteor should be of the color and shape of the peacock's train, there will be misery in the land. If it should move like a serpent, women will suffer. So I personally felt like it was a positive omen for me in my life, but as far as like a universal omen, which to me a comet or a meteor is kind of a universal omen because it's appearing in the sky and we can all see the sky. Um, I had noticed that it was in the direction of the Southwest from where I was from. And that night, later on that night, Trump gave a speech in the Southwest, I think it was in Phoenix, that went really, really badly. But then, in Las Vegas recently, which is Southwest from where I'm located, in the Southwest of the United States, there was the Las Vegas shooting. 
So this meteor showed up right after the eclipse. So that's why it was very, very like important. I thought it was very, very important. And I do think that it was kind of an omen about this Las Vegas shooting. Yeah. Because and uh, one thing I want to ask is like, for example, today, if you have seen this, so how does it play out that you see the result of the omen today or maybe within one, two days or what is your experience in that? Because sometimes we may see many things back to back. So then how do you judge that? Well, for me, you have to use your intuition and I'll, I'll explain how I use omens with clients, but just for a universal omen, I saw it right after the eclipse. So for me, it was the six month window between these eclipses and the next ones where I was like, okay, something's going to happen in this period because it was so close to the eclipse that I knew that it was kind of showing what's about to come, but it might take a while because it was universal. But that night too, there was that bad speech that Trump gave. I think it was in Phoenix. I should have looked this up, but I think it was in Phoenix. So there was an immediate thing, but it was kind of setting the stage. So to me, it's, um, it's hard to know exactly when, but let's talk a little bit about how I actually am using omens in my work so you can see how that plays out because it's a little bit of a different thing. And basically how I use them is I take, you know, between one to however many clients a day. Like it just doesn't, it, Usually if I have more than one client in a day, it's going to be very similar energy. Sometimes they'll even have a similar sun sign or they'll have a similar birth card, which um, if you watch my channel, you'll see what I mean by birth card. It's like a regular playing card that everyone is given a different card on the day they're born. So they'll have a similar birth card or something like that or similar transits that they're experiencing. So say that I only have one client during the day, which can sometimes happen. Um, for that day, like usually whatever omens I see are going to be for that person. First off, they're going to be for me because this is my life. I'm Nicole Rennie walking around in the world. So of course they're going to be for me. But if something feels just a little out of the ordinary, it's probably going to be for my client. And I've really learned how to pay attention to this because at a certain point when you're reading for clients all the time, even if you don't mean to you start to kind of live for other people your life start sort of starts to reach out and be open to helping other people so you're going to receive messages for people it's just the name of the game so one example of this is i had this amazing reading um with this guy and he sent me an email about the appointment in the morning when i was out walking um these dogs that i walk and I was walking around a lake and I was really drawn to this woman that was pregnant and I could not stop thinking about her. And I kept thinking about how beautiful she was. And I kept thinking about the, you know, her being pregnant. And I kept thinking, I wish I was pregnant, which is very not like me. Like I don't, I'm not, um, it's not that I never want to have children. I just never really think about it that much. And so for a good 10 minutes, I just kept feeling like, I just wish I was so in love. I wish I had a baby so strongly and the omen was this woman that was walking in front of me that was pregnant so i go to right after that um walk i go to my office and i sit down for the reading with this guy and i was supposed to be doing a two hour long tarot card reading but the first thing that i said was look i know this isn't what I know you were asking about your career. You sent me all career questions, but it, this isn't about your career. I was like, you want to have a family. You want to be in love. You want to be married. You want to have a family. That's what's, what, that's what this is really all about. And he was completely like, just completely blown away. He couldn't even believe it. He was like, I came to you for my career, but really I left with like way more than I could have ever imagined because he said, you pulled out my deepest most um like sacredly kept secret you know and I, it wasn't any effort it was just that i paid attention and i felt this thing and i knew it wasn't me and i knew you know at that point it was him i didn't even draw a single tarot card that whole entire reading i just explained in depth the em emotions the omen all of that so there's a really good example of an omen that just when i was in nature i saw and the best way to see omens is to spend time in nature 
So, because nature is intelligent, we're connected with it. So when we're part of it, we can start to see these messages. Um, another, another omen, I'll just share a few more examples. Another omen is before a reading, I was making tea and I started to fill the, the teacup with water and I just spilled it everywhere. It was just like all over the place. And I've, I never do that. So when I got on the phone with this client, I just started to talk about her need to slow down, to be careful because she can, you know, really create some accidents in her life if she doesn't. And she was like, absolutely, this is, you know, this has been the thing that I have been really trying to work on lately. So a lot of the times it's kind of energetic and I will feel that um, when I'm shuffling the deck. So one of the biggest omens that I get is how the deck feels when I'm shuffling it. If it is shuffling very smoothly, things are going well in the, in the client's life. If it's all over the place and cards are just flying everywhere, the person needs to center themselves. And I can tell that within two seconds, you know. Um, and then the last example I wanted to give is sometimes if I'm really stuck with the, you know, with the energy of the client. Like I just feel like sometimes it almost feel like I'm nervous. It's really weird. I'll be like, I'm nervous to see this client. I'll go on a walk specifically just to clear my head. And over time, these walks have turned into kind of omen walks. So I'll just go out in nature. And one time I, um, so if you look at the playing cards here, I'll just show you, there's all different symbols. And this is actually the one that I needed, which is so creepy. Um, but there's all different symbols. We have, you know, diamonds, spades, hearts, clubs. Here's a club. So clubs are like leaves. Spades can kind of be like leaves too, or birds. Um, so when I was walking, I saw three birds together and one flew away. So I knew that, that the three of spades was very important for her. I knew it just from that walk. And then what I saw or actually, I think I saw this first, or no, then what I saw is the two of diamonds, which was weirdly two pieces, two like wet marks that almost looked red on the concrete in front of me. So I knew even before I drew any cards for her, an hour before the reading that she had a three of spades message and a two of diamonds message. And, um, the things that I told her in the first 20 minutes without casting cards were probably the most accurate out of anything that I told her. I mean, everything was accurate, but that was the most specific and most in depth and probably freaked her out the most. And uh, how do you interpret that? I mean, three and two, I mean, how do you interpret that? Of course that will come by experience, but in general for us to learn, I'm just asking. Yeah. So the three of spades is about flying apart from something that you're comfortable with. And a lot of the times I'll get this card when someone is quitting their job or going to get fired from their job or needs to leave a situation that they're kind of like comfortable with because it's a very vulnerable card. So this person needed to leave a situation and she felt very vulnerable about it. It's basically the card of flying out of the nest where you have to gain strength. Because it's Breaking a harsh from the comfort zone. Comfort zone, you go away from that. Yeah, because it's a number three card and Mars is about building our strength. And the only way that we can really build our strength is if we put ourselves in uncomfortable situations. And then the two of diamonds was basically telling her that she would come into a, an opportunity that would make her feel more valuable or that would actually give her more value by maybe paying her more or an opportunity to make money or a new job. So I think in this situation, she was going to quit her job and she was going to find a new job. Okay, that two means you are interpreting from second house of money or how is it? Yeah, you can interpret it that way. And there's a lot, like it's numerology. So yeah, that can absolutely work. And we also think about the second sign, which is Taurus, you know, and Taurus is about our resources, our self-worth. Well, so is the second house. So there's all those different kind of links between the two. So, I mean, I probably use omens in like 60 to 75% of my readings, they don't come every time. Sometimes they come on too strongly. I've had to really watch myself. One time I um, went to do a reading and my eye just 
went crazy. I put a, my, one of my contacts in and it was burning my eye to the point where I almost canceled the reading because I couldn't open my eyes. And it was actually an omen for her because she was having a lot of eye troubles. Okay. So I've had to start to protect my energy more over time. My omens have become more objective um, and things like that. And yeah, so I, I tried to kind of protect myself a little bit more than I used to, but um, omens can be really that intense. But they're, I want to give one animal omen because I, I said the bird thing, but also very recently I walked out of my apartment and a rabbit came running towards me literally came running towards me without any fear until it realized, oh my gosh, what am I doing? And it went in the opposite direction. I thought I was just gonna be able to pick it up and hold it. Um, and to me, what this ended up meaning for a client was this person had to face their fears fearlessly. Right, because rabbits are usually prey. They're just like pretty helpless. And even though this client was feeling like helpless and very vulnerable it was time for him to like face some of his fears without even thinking about it and things would just work out things would be natural so those are my biggest examples that's how i work with omens um if i see an omen it ends up taking up a lot of the reading because it'll kind of surpass some of the things it's more profound because it's so obvious and it seems more um imminent and I'll also at times see omens for my clients in dreams, very, very specific dreams that I'll just have to share with them. Usually they're dreams that I have, I cannot make any sense of, and I'm pretty good at deciphering my dreams. But then once I start speaking with the client, all of a sudden I'm like this, oh, this dream is for you. And then I just let them know. Um, and yeah, everyone can see omens. Not everyone will receive an omen during a reading with me, but everyone in their lives can open themselves up to looking at omens, seeing omens. And I think the best way to connect with omens for other people is first to connect with your own personal omens. And I have two very big ones for me in my life. One is the eagle. So like the animal of the eagle. Uh, whenever I see an eagle, or a couple of eagles, or the more eagles, the better. I know that I'm on my right path, that I'm doing the right thing, that my actions are supported. I'm very connected with the eagle. I'll have dreams that I'm an eagle. <laughs> like, I'm just very... Flies, so, flies very high, that's why you aim to go very high. Maybe that's the meaning. Yes, and they can swim deeper than any other bird, too. So they can go high and they can go, you know... Pick the, they'll go and pick the fish from the water. Yeah, exactly. So eagles are very important to me. If you ever see like my social media stuff, I have like eagle stuff everywhere. Like I have an eagle hanging up in my office here. Like I have eagle everything. I have eagle pins, eagle earrings, <laughs> eagle t-shirts. I'm like very much a big eagle nerd. And then also I very much resonate with the number 222. And that is a, you know, it's a Venus number, but it's, kind of like it's bigger than that to me and it's um every time i see that number i know that i'm like on the right path and doing the right thing i'm you know well supported so those are some big signs for me yeah, and that's even in uh, india they have all this for example they say that uh, if some person has uh, passed away in their funeral and in his home, if somebody comes and uh, out of nowhere, if somebody comes and asks, for example, oh, where is this person who just passed? So then it is said that the person has gone back to God. That is one of the omen. He doesn't take another birth. The other woman, uh, it is said this, when you burn somebody's body, then if a cow comes and she will just hover around that place because cow is considered to be a very auspicious animal. Uh, a blessing of the gods that is why it is said that uh, that person also does not take birth again he he or she goes back to the spiritual realm from where he he or she has come so these are omens and regarding the meteor which you said so that that is also said like uh, it is said that whenever you see that meteor coming you should always make a wish i did make a wish 
<laughs> I did because yeah, it's like the shooting star, but um, it was so big that it was like even more than that. You know, it was like I said, it looked like a train driving through outer space. It was it was wild. Um, one thing I really want to mention is that people, you know, people will kind of get concerned when they think, you know, oh, you're opening up yourself energetically to all this craziness and, you know, don't you think that's dangerous and things like that to receive omens for other people. But what I have found by really studying the charts of the people, the clients that come to me, is that there is an interrelationship. There's a relationship between my energy and the client's energy at the time of the reading. So for instance, typically, I'm an eight of diamonds birth card. And typically, um, when a client is getting a reading with me, they will have a very prominent eight of diamonds present in their seven year progression, their month or their yearly progression, their weekly progression, and most likely their daily progression. So it usually gets very specific where an eight of diamonds will show up during the day for them or the king of diamonds, which is my progressed card. So they'll always have my energy present. Also, I will typically have their birth card showing up in my spreads in some way. So there will always be an interchange of that energy. So I'm supposed to have, for instance, let's say that you're a four of clubs. If you set up a reading with me tomorrow, and I'll probably have a four of clubs. If not, I'll have your progress card in my spread. So I'm meant to have a four of clubs experience. And you will have an eight of diamonds. So you're meant to have an eight of diamonds experience. There's always some interplay there. And if there isn't, if it's not in the cards, it's usually in the astrology where we are having a similar transit or a similar, there's always going to be a relationship because um, we attract, we learn through reflection, you know, we always learn through reflection and seeing ourselves. And so even if you go to a great master, that master can't really help you unless there's something of you as a part of them, you know? So Basically, what I'm trying to say is that, yes, I, I had a crazy thing happening in my eye. And yes, I did see a bird and whatever, and it meant something for these other people. But they came to me at the time when that was going to happen so that I could give them that message. So it's not like I'm being attacked by all these different signs. It's just that our, it's like I was going to have this experience and they were meant to know about these experiences. And that's why the timing of a reading is so profound and important. And it's why I never push readings on people and I never try to over promote myself or anything because I feel like readings happen when they're meant to and mostly because of these sort of signs so if people are like oh I don't have enough money for a reading right now I'm just like well come back to me in five months when you have the money because that will be the time when it's it's not just this person's energy that needs to be right my energy has to match your energetic Signature and that's why we can't all read for the same people. I have friends that are astrologers and I've read for some of the same clients as they have But at different times in their lives and honestly most of my friends that read we have completely different clients Like the people that I help are so different and usually their energies are more Reflective or compatible with my birth chart and I know that because I get to see all their birth charts and their um, card spread so that is how I see omens really making sense. And I don't think that an astrologer all of a sudden becomes accosted with energy. I think that as an astrologer, you're just more in tune with nature. And I will be making a video about nature and astrology very soon on my channel. So I would highly recommend watching that. But um, as astrologers, we're meant to, you know, kind of become more aligned with nature. And so Typically, astrologers are going to be open to seeing signs around them and working with them. And studying astrology is making that conscious and learning what that is, you know? Yeah, even I have seen, like, especially the day when moon transits that particular nakshatra. Yes. So, for, uh, so for example... Uh, so, for example, yesterday when uh, I had gone to a hotel for eating something, and yesterday, uh, in the sidereal zodiac, moon was transiting the nakshatra of Revati in Pisces. And surprisingly, the, I went to the hotel for the first time. And uh, what happened was, the only thing I saw was elephants. <laughs> wow. Because, 
because revti is connected to elephants yeah. and they they have this that it's like the big uh, thing and when elephants walk what happens there are some other small animals which walk behind them also in the forest that is why whenever you are in company of a person who has prominent planets in revti you will feel very secure like angelina jolly has her moon in revti as per the sidereal zodiac so these are things and today moon is in ashwini so i am getting the feeling things are happening very fast because <laughs> ashwini yes, is all that's about what I was saying right because you're like what's the omen for today and i was like i don't know but things are just fast <laughs> like <laughs> i didn't even check the moon but it is in ashwini that's right it is today and last time 27 days back like rohini is about to come after 2 3 days so last time when rohini came exact one month back i don't know what happened suddenly i made a video on relationships or something and i uploaded i don't know out of the blue it happened because rohini signifies all these relationship and showbiz love romance all these yeah because the moon loves to be in rohini all right so i will end the thing here if you want to say anything else regarding your channel or any other upcoming course or any other place where you teach then you can say yeah well hopefully in the future i'll have some courses but for now i'm focusing on my channel listen to the stars so please check that out and subscribe because i always have interesting guests on um and i make videos about all this kind of stuff and i also have a newsletter that you can sign up for as well which will be linked in my videos and go to my website and check it out have a session with me if you are like you're probably interested in astrology if you're on this channel but if you're still like kind of afraid of astrology but you want an experience then i do life coaching as well and i do use a little bit of astrology if you want me to or i don't have to but life coaching is a great way to you know improve your life make some changes in your life if you're kind of scared of the uh astrology tarot stuff or you're just kind of getting your feet wet so definitely we will wait to see the different guests that you invite and maybe you open some course or some university some school some day where you can uh, teach the these things very systematically and especially about those cards which you said that looks very fascinating to me because i don't have any knowledge on cards or numerology also so maybe some other time you have to come back and <laughs> explain yeah. more on them eventually i want to teach things and i'm doing a lot more writing so you know check on my website for that there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen with you know me and astrology but <laughs> i get so overwhelmed <laughs> I no and i would request uh, i would request whoever is watching this video that please subscribe to her channel and if you want a reading then you can always contact her for tarot readings and even she is reading charts now you can mail her and go to the website which i will post below and if you have any questions queries or comments regarding omens yeah <laughs> thank you, you. Like, yeah i just want to say thank you so much you've been such a gracious wonderful host thank you yeah thank you thank you thank you All right, should we end the recording here? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you everyone. Nice to Bye. see all of you Bye. here. Bye.